Welcome to the B. Washington Interactive Theater. Soon it will be your turn to test your leadership and decision-making skills in a crisis Washington faced during his presidency. Here's the situation. It has been 10 years since the United States won its independence from the Kingdom of Great Britain. George Washington is now the first president of the United States, and Great Britain is a key trading partner. But all is not well on the European continent. France, whose alliance was vital in our victory over the British and the American Revolution, is now in the midst of their own revolution, which is growing increasingly radical. French revolutionaries declared an end to their monarchy, beheaded King Louis XVI, and proclaimed themselves a republic. Kingdoms throughout Europe, fearful revolution will spread to their own countries, have declared war on the French Republic, including Great Britain, who is our most important trading partner. The French appeal to America for help. The two nations have a treaty dating back to 1778, during the American Revolution, which calls for mutual aid during times of war. Under the terms of the treaty, France sends their ambassador, Charles Genet, to the United States to recruit Americans to attack and capture British merchant ships operating in the Atlantic and Caribbean. The situation sets off a heated debate among Washington's cabinet members. Uh, the French ambassador, enthusiastic for the cause, is already recruiting our citizens to fight. We are not prepared at this moment to engage in a war. We lack guns, ships, and trained officers, not to mention our Indian problems on the frontier. We all agree we cannot fight a general war, but we need to support our revolutionary war ally and brothers in liberty. American citizens have no business supporting the French in this anarchic war. We think in English. Our commercial ties are with the British, and we must maintain peace with Great Britain to keep our customs revenue from any risk. The Secretary of Treasury is only looking at this from an economic standpoint. As Secretary of State, I must remind you of our obligations. Our 1778 treaty with France promises mutual aid in case of war. <laughs> our treaty with the French was made with poor Louis XVI, who no longer has a head. France is in a state of chaos. There is no head of state. They are at war with all the monarchies of Europe. Our young nation cannot afford to be dragged into this maelstrom. There are those in your administration whose heads are itching for crowns, coronets, and mitres. Enough. President Washington issues a proclamation stating America's neutral position in the war between France and Great Britain. His decision sets off a fierce public debate. Some claim the president has overstepped his authority. They argue that Congress should make the decision, while Ambassador Genet and his American privateers continue to attack British ships. You are about to step into the role of President Washington. As President of the United States, will you take a hard line and enforce a strict policy of neutrality? Will you allow Ambassador Genet and his American privateers to continue to attack British ships under the terms of our treaty with France? Or will you ask Congress to set a clear policy? Just like President Washington, you will have to make your decision under pressure as the situation continues to evolve. You will be able to seek advice from various advisors who represent people and sources President Washington would have consulted. But be aware... They will offer contradictory opinions, and you will not have time to hear from everyone. Just like President Washington, it will be up to you, alone, to decide how strongly you agree or disagree with their advice, and whether they will impact your decision as the President of the United States. Now is your chance to be Washington. It's your turn to lead. The Treaty of 1778 grants the French access to our ports to refit their ships in times of war and to sell lawful prizes captured in a war against the British. The treaty denies these rights to the British. The cause of liberty, the cause of the French, is our cause. The ardent spirit of our constituents proclaims it. Let us support the French and not give hope to the conspirators against human liberty. Honor our treaty 
and support the French. The law of nations is clear. The Treaty of 1778 obliges us to allow the French to use our ports and gain material support during a defensive war. This treaty with the French was made many years ago without relation to the present war, and it's therefore no breach of neutrality to fulfill it. The law of nations should be our guide. We are on solid ground. Honor our treaty and support the French. The French Revolution is becoming increasingly radical. Her present prospects for a Republican government are dreadful. The disorganized state of the government appears to be irremediable. Terror is the order of the day. A great and awful crisis seems to be near at hand. How all this will end? God only knows. But I fear it will Mr. Lear, what do you make of this letter from the British ambassador? While operating in the Delaware Bay, Ambassador Genet's French privateers have taken the British ship William as a prize. has captured the British ship within the territory and jurisdiction of the United States in direct violation of the law of nations. Read on, Mr. Lear. Will the United States continue to act as a silent partner to the French, or will they act on the promises of neutrality? His Britannic Majesty's Minister to the United States, George Hammond. The British ambassador did not take kindly to this attack by a French privateer in American waters. Will this affect your decision? You have three new advisors to hear from. And badly. We should not entangle the fate of our own country in France's revolution. Enforce a strict policy of neutrality. Your Excellency. Why have you not taken into consideration the question of the French alliance? France came to your aid when you were at war with Great Britain. Why will you not come to our aid now? There exists here in America an English party whose misinformation and propaganda maybe affect some of your executive decisions. Ask the American people, and they will tell you. The cause of France is the cause of 1776. Honor your treaty and support your French allies. This is a list of British vessels captured off the coast of the United States by American ships who have been hired by the French ambassador Charles Genet to carry out France's war against Great Britain. While I can entertain no doubt that the executive government of the United States will consider this an infringement on its policy of neutrality with Great Britain, so clearly and unequivocally asserted in the President's proclamation. You must immediately restore our ships to their rightful British owners and stop Americans from attacking British subjects. Or perhaps you would like us to retaliate. Congress must resolve this question, not the President. If the French revolutionaries triumph, the President's ill-fated proclamation of neutrality will be a millstone from which he will never recover. spirit of 1776 is rekindling. Ambassador Genet is inciting mob rule. 
Mr. President, his actions overstep his bounds as a diplomatic official. The British ship William is in the port of Philadelphia as a French prize. Upon her coming into sight, thousands and thousands crowded the wharves, and when they saw the British colors reversed and the French flag flying above, they burst into peals of exaltation. Your cabinet remains at odds on how to handle the situation with France. You may consult your advisors one last time, but make haste. The country awaits your decision. The power to declare war is expressly vested where all other legislative powers are vested, in the Congress of the United States. It should then follow that Congress, not the President, has the power to declare neutrality. Let Congress decide what to do. Fellow citizens, the European monarchies and their aristocratic friends menace the very existence of freedom. Should the glorious efforts of Republican France be eventually defeated, we have reason to presume that the United States, the only remaining depository of liberty in the world, could come under attack by those same tyrannical kingdoms in Europe. Sir, by coming to the aid of France, you are not only protecting the future liberty of this country, but future liberty for all. Time's up. Your advisors have spoken. This is a reflection of how much you agreed or disagreed with their advice. As president, it's up to you alone to make the decision. Will you take a hard line and enforce a strict policy of neutrality? Will you allow Ambassador Genet and his American privateers to continue to attack British ships under the terms of our treaty with France? Or will you ask Congress to set a clear policy? You have 10 seconds to cast your vote, starting now. The results are in. The group is deadlocked. The votes are evenly split. Now let's find out what President Washington decided to do. The duty and interest of the United States requires that we should with sincerity and good faith adopt and pursue a conduct friendly and impartial towards all of the belligerent powers. Ambassador Genet is out of line. Secretary Jefferson, you will ask that he be recalled to France. We will warn the citizens of the United States to avoid committing, aiding, and abetting hostilities against any of the said powers. Great Britain on the first part, and France on the other. We remain at peace with all nations. President Washington chose to enforce neutrality. Congress formalized the policy into law the following year. The French government recalled Ambassador Genet, but a change in leadership in France had President Washington fearful that Genet might be executed. He allowed Genet to remain in the United States in a non-diplomatic capacity. France's revolution would ultimately lead to the rise of Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte and the Napoleonic Wars. President Washington's decision avoided a costly war that could have jeopardized the fate of our young republic. His leadership established the supremacy of the executive branch over matters of American foreign policy and his preference for neutrality would become a founding element of U.S. foreign policy for the next 100 years.